Okay, so that's mostly decarbonized. Uh, um, still needs some more cleaning. But next step is just to give the uh, valves a quick lap um, and check they're seating properly. Okay, so of course at the moment, um, inlet valve, which has also been cleaned uh, or decarbonized, same. Um, and then when I'm happy with that, a quick clean up, and then with the uh, fine uh, powder, no, paste, I should say. See how we're going. It's not looking too bad. Yeah, not too bad at all. Okay, so on with this. Catch you guys later. Okay, with the valves uh, lapped, now it's turn, time to turn our attention to the uh, actual cylinder head joint itself. Now, uh, if you don't have the special tool, um, you can use uh, an old cylinder barrel with the uh, uh, fins smashed off it so that it can fit past the uh, tubes here for the push rods um, but it's the same process um, if you can get leaks through here uh, um, if, if this isn't lapped in so uh, as I say it's the same it's the same process as before Only on a slightly larger scale. on these engines as it is so you don't want to lose any leaking out past the joint here same process course then fine um, and when you're happy with it job done and if you haven't got this uh, tool then uh, your local Citroen owners club will have it and if you join them you'll be able to borrow it one thing I would say of course when you're lapping the valves, you're lapping a steel valve into a steel valve seat. Here, you're lapping into the alloy head itself, so it doesn't take as much. But, easy enough. But job needs to be doing. Right, one final task before I do the final clean, uh, before reassembly, is just to knock off this uh, lip of alloy from where tube was has just kissed the case as it was being pushed in this 
happens all the time with these engines. There are people who are not really experienced in putting them back together. Miss it. So make sure you don't make that mistake. So easy to do, it really is. There we go. Otherwise, it's a really good pair of tubes. Okay, time for its final cleanup and uh, then back together. Okay, so cylinder head has been cleaned, at least to the best of my ability. Um, so sort of bead blasting would have brought it up a little bit better, but um, as I say, it's been cleaned as well as I can. Um, so now ready to see if we can put it back together. Now, inlets this side, obviously with a bigger valve. Um, I'll just check I know which one is which. So inlet there, that moves okay. The valve guide. So, by myself, inlet exhaust. Now, new valve guides. In the uh, standard rebuild pack of gaskets that you can get for the 2CV, um, it comes with ones more like that were on here when I bought uh, came with this engine, so what how it's previously running. Um, ECAS doesn't recommend them, so they recommend the Burton ones instead. So um, it's probably not really obvious on the camera, um, but they are a bit better made. So let's just uh, try and wiggle them on. Not tried these valve guides on before, so looks like they're more than my fingers will do. So, what is this? 11 mil uh, 16 point socket, which just fits over there. But the idea, as far as I understand it, from uh, those who rebuild this sort of stuff, is that uh, you want to get it seated on there first before you start hammering it into place. Um, so it's on the square and not hammering it in at an angle, because then you just need to pull the valve guide off and buy a new one. Okay, not entirely square, so I'm not entirely happy with that, but we'll... Obviously caught the edge of the guide a little bit. Seems to be okay. Let's see if we can do a bit better on the exhaust side.
Okay, now I'm going to install the valves. Now, the uh, two valve collars, um, obviously spring collars, one at the top, one at the bottom. Bottom one is the only one that fits on the bottom, so it's not hard. These appear to be the uh, green rated springs. Now, I'm not testing these for uh, fit and compression because they are the same valves that came out so I'm just going to make an assumption that uh, whoever built this before actually uh, did it correctly and it could well have been the factory chances are it was a factory so I'm going to take a chance that uh, um, it is actually uh, properly made Just some loop on the uh, valve stem so that uh, as I don't know how long it's going to be before I run this engine for a start. Oops, yeah, oh, it's good to put those on afterwards. Fingers and thumbs this morning. As ever, they always recommend that you don't have this pointing towards you when you do it, just in case these uh, valve collets do let go, which uh, is a distinct possibility. Again, not pointing towards you, in the ideal world. Let's just make sure they're seated properly. Okay, same for the uh, exhaust. So cleanliness, oh, cleanliness is everything with these. I mean, you can rebuild an engine, you know, for a quick thing while it's on the car and it's still covered in oil and shit and everything else. But um, why would you, really? And certainly, if you've uh, if you've uh, cleaned and lapped, 
things like uh, the exhaust ports and uh, this so you've got grinding paste the last thing you ever want is that going to be sitting in your engine so uh, it makes no sense to me at all why you'd want to do that without getting everything as clean as you can Again, let's make sure these are seated. Try not to be uh, having my face in the way. Okay, valve springs in. Now, rockers. Now, this is the inlet, one that was on the inlet, because I kept them separately when I was been working on it. And now this is the inlet. This one's got a screw thread in, and this one hasn't. So we know that uh, it goes this way around. And uh, that makes complete sense because uh, the uh, push rod, hole for the push rod is here. So, and that's our adjuster. These seem okay, they don't seem overly worn. Again, cleaned as much as I can. And again, uh, just some lube. Don't be expecting this to have to be nicely lubed up um, until the engine's been running for quite a while. So um, I'd certainly recommend that uh, uh, you make sure that this is as lubed as it can be. Just a good measure. So, thick washer on. The actual valve end. Wavy washer. Well, that's how they were assembled from the factory anyway. Damped washer. Let's get a rounded end out this way. grease on this one.
talk that up in a minute. So. Same on the other side. Just a wiggle, doesn't fit. Uh, you can see just the small holes here, one here and here, are all that allows lubrication into these. So really important to get it lubed up properly. Right, now just to keep things clean while I'm still assembling, just going to put the uh, oil uh, screw just loosely back in here. Now I'm going to put back also the, uh, but again just loosely, just the uh, bolts that would hold the uh, casing onto this motor, not that I'm going to use it, um, but um, I need to decide whether I'm actually going to do anything else with that, so I'm just going to put them in here for now and take them out later if I decide I don't want to use them. The next stage is to refit these. These I've straightened up the edges um, on these tubes here and uh, such that I can get the fittings that go on here on and off more or less successfully. I've actually got to clean these up so that's the next job but what we want to do now as I say is to keep this as clean as we can so I'm just going to put the uh, valve covers on
is the universal fit replaceable seals here. Seem a bit of a loose fit to me. I've not used them before. I've got the standard ones in the gasket pack. But these are supposed to be re reusable. Don't need to stick them in place. Well, we'll see. There we go. One almost fully rebuilt cylinder head. So now let's uh, get these done. Put the new rubbers um, on here. Again, they come in the standard pack. Um, and uh, but first, I just want to clean this stuff up. De-rust these washers. I was looking for some new sets of these, but I've not been able to find one yet. So if I do, I'll redo these. Okay, one cylinder head. Time for some more cleaning. Right, so with the cylinder head done, we open up the barrel. Now, this piston, because it had been just, I think maybe when I was taking the, the uh, gudgeon pin out, I'm not sure, or maybe some other time, but it had just been struck slightly on the side. And uh, yeah, there's a bit of a dent and the uh, ring was jammed tight in there so it broke getting it out so really need a set of uh, new rings um, these are eight and a half uh, compression uh, cylinders or pistons i should say barrels in very good nick um, no issues with those at all um, I'm not entirely happy with these gudgeon pins. I can feel a bit of wear there, so I think new ones. Problem with this is that when I came to look at it, to buy a set of piston rings and gudgeon pins for not much more money, I could buy a complete set. Um, and in... Uh, Slightly higher compression, which is nine. Um, classic parts industry, they're based in the Netherlands, they make Citroen parts. Um, so, what have we got? Well, nice new barrel. And they're supposed to be a high compression piston. And that barrel has been honed. It's always, <laughs> um, that's what I thought I was going to have to do. I thought I was expecting to have to hone these. Um, you always have to hone barrels. You can't just get a brand new barrel, reboard barrel, uh, whatever, and shove a piston in it. It's got to be honed. Um, because if it's not honed, it hasn't got this honing marks on here. Um, it doesn't work very well. Um, the piston rings don't seal properly. Um, so there we go. So I have the uh, circlips, gudgeon pin, nah, maybe a little bit tight, but nah, okay, not too bad. Certainly that's another thing with those is the gudgeon pins were too far too stiff um, and so they was going to need to be, uh, the piston would need to be reamed out. That's going well. Um, now but the only thing I haven't got here, but the only thing they don't appear to have done for me <laughs> was to actually put the piston rings in but I guess if they'd done that then it wouldn't have gone in such a neat package um, and they appear to be all in here 
Now the only thing I haven't done is to measure to see uh, what the piston ring gaps are. Now, okay, so on those ones, your scraper ring is a single composite thing, or it's been stuck together, one or the other. I'm not quite sure which. And I need to figure out which of these is the top ring, and which way up it goes. Well, they're not marked. Now, this one's a lot thinner than that one. And if I remember from my piston rings, they are actually different width. So that's the second ring and that's the top. but there's no indication which way up they should go. Um, and also, the question is, what's the piston ring gap? Right. Let me get my, the manual and feeder gauges and just double check um, what gaps we have here. Okay, so it turns out that I don't have any uh, feeder gauges. <laughs> don't know what's happened to them. So uh, I'm just going to have to assume that these are actually correct. And uh, take it from there. So... Okay, so putting the rings on. Let's see what we've got. Top ring. Grey cast iron middle ring. And the two the three parts of the oil control ring. So it's gonna wrap the uh, oil control ring on first and uh, just make sure it doesn't overlap itself there we go so just roll that one on there Make sure that's all on square, which is good. Really difficult to see where the actual oil control ring stops, so I'm going to just going to offset those two there. Right, so this is the top ring. Double check that. And we'll not go in there. There are no markings and the profile appears identical so Again, there are no markings and the profile appears the same, so this is the 
much uh, stronger ring onto there does push on the back there we go so we have one gap there one gap there one gap there and one gap there So now pistons are marked for front, so we need to make sure that uh, um, we install them on the engine the right way round. Now that's it. Simple as that. Gadget and pins will of course need to be lubricated um, before we install them, but that's all part of uh, the next process. Okay, moving on. All right, there we go. So. Cylinders rebuilt, barrels redone. Um, not as I originally intended because I did originally intend to use the original barrels, um, but uh, this is slightly higher compression, so it'll give the car a little more power. And as I say, there was actually very little difference in buying the complete pistons, barrels, uh, piston rings, new gudgeon things as a kit than it would have cost me um, just to buy the rings and the gudgeon pins, which is ridiculous, um, but uh, there you go. Now I'm sure I could probably source them, but as it stands I've got a good set of pistons, I've got a good set of barrels, um, and uh, the old engine um, is still on my list of things to rebuild, so they might prove good donor parts um, for that engine, um, and in fact might prove the simple way of getting around the issues I've got, or some of the issues I've got with that one. I might need to get some new cylinder heads or something for it as well. Well, we'll see, uh, you know, uh, how many parts can I change on the engine and it still be the old engine. Um, but uh, it's got the old clutch on it, so I think it's a good chance it was the original engine in the car, so I'd like to get it back in there. Not that it's the original car, of course, but hey. Okay, so. Um, the next step is going to be, I think, to rebuild the engine, um, then get back onto the gearbox, um, get that cleaned up uh, and such. Um, so I'm going to move into a stage now where things are going to need to be cleaned and painted. Um, so that's going to slow me down a little bit, but that's next. So it's enough for now, I think. So uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.